So looking at this page, we can see that we have some terms to explain. Now, eicosanoids. What are eicosanoids? They are basically derived from the word eicosa, which means 20 carbon. That is, they are compounds derived from the 20 carbon arachidonic acid. So, now what? Uh, can somebody remind me again why we are studying this? What? Because it's on your syllabus? Mm, I think not. Look, my hand is trying to tell me something. A cell regulating polyunsaturated fatty acid. Hmm, looks like it has cell regulating in it. That means it has a function and that makes it important, doesn't it? I think to understand this, we should first see how eicosanides are made and then their functions. And then we can see that how we can manipulate them to our advantage because that's what we do best at pharmacology, manipulation. Let's look at the synthesis. Now, synthesis of eicosanoids takes place when membrane phospholipids are acted upon by phospholipase A2 and converted into arachidonic acid, which is a 20 carbon fatty acid. Now this arachidonic acid can be acted upon by two enzymes. One is cyclooxygenases and the other is lipoxygenases. Now there are basically two types of cyclooxygenases or we call them COX-1 and COX-2. Now COX-1 is mainly present normally constitutively in many tissues and has a variety of different functions by producing prostaglandins. But COX-2 is present in brain and kidneys constitutively, but its main function is in inflammation, which is due to any injurious stimuli, trauma, heat, toxins, inflammatory mediators, you name it. Now, COX produces a number of prostaglandins, which are PGE1, PGI2, PGF2-alpha, PGE2, PGD2, and thromboxane A2. On the other hand, on the lipoxygenase pathway, we get leukotrienes. There are many of them as well, like LTA4, LTB4, LTC4, LTD4, and LTE4, etc. But we are not going to talk about each of them in detail because they are pretty much involved in the same functions, that is, inflammation, chemotaxis, neutrophil activation, adhesion, and aggregation, and release of lysosomal enzymes. Now we are going to talk about each of the prostaglandins formed from the COX-1 or COX-2 in detail. I'll use the green marker for the actions that we want it to perform, and the red, which we don't want. Let's start with PGE1. Now PGE1 makes the cervix favorable for induction and facilitation of labor. It also is a potent vasodilator. Coming to PGI2, it is cytoprotective for GIT, that is, it reduces GI secretions and increases mucus secretion, thus preventing ulcers. It also has a vasodilatory effect. PGF2-alpha has a negative action not actually negative, but in this context, it constricts pulmonary veins and arteries. It also contracts pregnant uterus. It decreases intraocular pre pressure. And it also plays a role in cervical ripening, that is, it makes it favorable for induction and facilitation of labor. PGE2 is also cytoprotective for GIT tract. GIT. It also vasodilates, contracts the uterus, and has role in platelet and kidney function. Now PGD2, its good effect is for us vasodilation, and the bad effect is bronchoconstriction. The thromboxane A2 bad function is platelet aggregation, thrombosis that is, and vasoconstriction.
as i mentioned previously leukotrienes are all bad functions not bad in the sense but bad because we cannot use them pharmacologically they are all important functions in inflammation that are chemotaxis neutrophil activation adhesion and aggregation of neutrophils and release of lysosomal enzymes now let's see how we can use these prostaglandins as drugs for our advantage the pge1 as it in helps in the induction and facilitation of labor Gemiprost and alprostadil are used in cervical priming. Its vasodilatory effect is also helpful in neonates with patent ductus arteriosus who are waiting for surgery and have another heart disease such as um, transposition of great vessels too to keep the ductus arteriosus open. It can also be used as a vasodilator in erectile dysfunction. Now let's see how PGI2 can be used. Epoprostenol, triprostenol and iloprost can be used in pulmonary hypertension due to its vasodilatory effect. This vasodilatory effect is prominent in peripheral pulmonary and coronary circulation. PGF2 alpha latanoprost can be used to decrease intraocular pressure in glaucoma it is also helpful in abortion and induction of labor also in postpartum hemorrhage these are dinoprost and carboprost pge2 dinoprostone and sol Prostone can be used to contract the uterus, same reasons as PGF2 alpha was used for abortion and induction of labor. Now let's see how leukotrienes can be of use. Now as all of these are bad functions, so we need to antagonize them with leukotriene receptor antagonist and lipoxygenase inhibitors. Leukotriene receptor antagonist, which is Montelukast, and lipoxygenase inhibitors such as Xylutin are used in asthma. So that these all these bad functions and hypersensitivity reactions do not occur. Now, at the end, let's see some adverse effects of prostaglandins. They are nausea and vomiting. Of course, fever and flushing, diarrhea due to smooth muscle contraction, hypertension due to vasodilation, backache due to uterine contractions, and injections are usually painful because these are the substances which are normally released which elicit pain by stimulating the nerve endings. That's it. Thanks for watching.